Let's call the meeting to order if you join us in the pledge, please, Jerry. Mr. Brown, this is Anthony Labruto. He's one of our seventh grade students. He's going to lead us in the pledge, and then I'm going to introduce a couple of students to you, just some accomplishments they've uh, had over the last couple of weeks. Anthony? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, Mr. Brown, if I may just uh, jump the agenda a little bit, you know, sure. a couple things in the principal's report. I want to introduce to you Anthony Labruto. As I said, Anthony Labruto is one of our seventh grade students who participated in the National Geographic Geography Bee here at school. He won the Geography Bee here at school when he was invited to Keene State last month uh, to participate in the State Geography Bee. And Anthony, want to tell us, how, how old did you do? I got eighth place. Very good. Right. Nice yeah. job, Anthony. Yeah. This is Anthony's first year here at school, and he, but he's been a, he's a veteran of the uh, geography bee, and he wanted to make sure that we did that this year. So it, it brought us to, us up to speed. We put it in play, and we're expecting to see him go even further next year. I, Anthony did a great job. Great job. Questions of Mr. Labruto? Any questions, sir? No. Anthony, no. Anthony, nice job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anthony. Mr. Osborne, can you see Kerry Hicks? Can you say hi, Kerry? <laughs> I, you know, just the great things that are happening here at um, the Paul School. Carrie decided to donate. How many inches was that, Miss Hicks? Um, it was a little over 12 inches of her hair. She donated to Wigs for Kids. And when I asked, you know, Carrie about it, her response was, I want to make sure kids with cancer have hair. So um, nice. Nice job, Carrie. Nice. 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 She's all dressed up in that school today because of kindergarten registration and screening, but. She did a super job. I just want you to get a, a chance to meet Carrie and, and Anthony and the great things that are happening here. So, thank you Thanks, very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you gentlemen. Did you get all that, Bonnie? Yeah, I did. Good. Pardon? Oh, not all of them. I pulled out one and I wanted to check on, but check. If you've got something you want to check, you can. Who's making the noise? No, if you turn it down just a hair, and I'm not going to put that volume, so we'll see if it goes in that case in the house and what.
hear a lot of paper shuffling, Bonnie? I do a lot of it, actually. <laughs> would you like to review the check register? <laughs> I would probably wait till I get back for that. Thank you. Rochester School Department. Yeah, How was that? It's April. It comes in April. It's back on there. It's the last, I believe it's the last billing of the year. And it's, it says third billing. Is that how it's split right. up into third? Yeah, because one was November, one was January, and now it's February and April. Are they even? No, it's based on what number of students were at the school, how many days they attended. So there might be a fluctuation if someone started later in the year or left. You have both situations going on, people coming and going. All right. It just seems like a high number to be split up into thirds. But <coughs> it was 700 and something thousand dollars. Yeah, 723. Yeah, which is, our budget's over two million, so it's... Yeah, that's right, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Set on the manifest. And if so, can I have a motion to approve the manifest? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second it. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 One abstention. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. Uh, minutes of the last meeting. I think a change on page two. Other visitors and public comment. Hi Beth. Hi. How are you? Good. Um, top sentence in that visitors slash public comment. Second sentence. It says, answer included them motion. Should it be the motion? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I wasn't sure. Um, my last name, two L's. First I go for Robert to Bob, <laughs> and now I mess up the last name. I apologize. It's All right. Bob Goulet. <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> no. First page, my name's Norma, not Norman. No. Hey, Norma. <laughs> <laughs> but that's normal. 
Page three. I think there's an extra bullet there. Um, halfway down the page, questions posed as to other curriculums in use by other states. Yes. How does the, and then there's a That's bullet. That's got to go. Okay, so you, you remove that bullet? Mm hmm. Thank you. No, just the bullet. Just the bullet. Oh, okay. It's the wrong spot. I have one correction. Good. Oh, you have? Yeah. Page five. And then <coughs> public comments, the first first bullet, our parents were allowed, uh, were involved in the selection of textbooks. You should strike the word. I <coughs> yeah. strike the word were. Were. Or were parents involved? Strike the word are. Get rid of the word were. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yes. And we had a request from Mrs. Colbath to include the, the list of questions that I reviewed in the last meeting to be part of the minutes. Um, the board to include those. We could include them uh, as a and you can approve them as amended, <coughs> including those questions. Well, all right, we're done. Yeah. <coughs> Is the, was it the, the questions um, <coughs> printed out and given to the full board as part of the <coughs> packet that we received prior to the meeting? For correspondence. Yeah. It was under correspondence. So wouldn't that be considered part of the minutes, the, the packet? I mean, is it something that is already in? in our information that's available to the public? Uh, the request is for the specific questions <coughs> in there, that list of questions. So it's up to the board if you'd like to include those or not. We did get that request. What are we done? Yeah, okay. All right, so there's a motion to approve the minutes of April 2nd as amended. Do it a second. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Is there any reason why we can't do the non-public now? Excellent. So, can I have a motion to approve the non-public of April 2nd, 2014? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, just one, one thing on the, I guess, in the minutes it says, Mr. Gregoire stated you scheduled a copy with the principal. Um, is there a way of posting that on the message board out in the parking lot? You know, so people know that that copy with the principal is happening? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. What's the, it certainly is. Um, we do post it, and yeah, it's posted in, it noted in the Wakefield Weekly. It's put out on Facebook. We certainly could. Okay. Um, uh, since it happens so infrequently, I don't think that would be an issue. Okay. Sorry about that. No, it's good. Uh, public comment. Jandrea? Mm -hmm. Shane and I are here for part of the PCA. So we are going to do another, we did a movie night in the fall and it was really successful. So we're going to do another movie night this spring. Um, it's going to be May 31st on Saturday. Um, it will have a rain date, however, because it will be very successful outdoors. So we're hoping to have it outdoors again. Mm -hmm. So the rain date will be for the following weekend, June 7th. 
Um, we haven't picked a specific time yet, um, but it will be in the evening time frame. It's going to be a carnival theme. Um, we are looking for a snow cone making machine for the carnival, so if anyone knows of anyone with a snow cone making machine, um, that would be helpful. Um, just a quick end of the year kind of update from the PTA. We did a fundraising, we've done a couple of community events. Um, after the overhead and everything's been taken out, we raised around 1500 that we've been able to fortunately be rolling back into the school. So. Can you please let them know that the PTA does have a hot dog machine and it's stored at my facility. So when I get back, I can give it to them. What about a snow cone machine? Yeah, because we're actually doing both. <laughs> yeah. I do, but we don't loan it out because it's campground. Oh. And if it gets broken, I, I can't loan that out. But they do have a hot dog machine that was donated by the kitchen when the, the system switched over and it's being stored with um it's being stored in the kitchen at, at at my facility that they can have that and they can take it back if they have storage for it i don't have to store it anymore we could definitely use that because mm -hmm. we do hot dogs as well they would appreciate that yes thank that's you wonderful much. not a problem thank you who thank do you i get in touch with uh shane crafton shane, shane. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much. Any questions for the PTA? Anything that's been going on with it this year? Or? Yeah. Big enrollment, big membership so far? Um, well, I don't know compared to past years because I wasn't here for past years, but I want to say we have around 38 to 40 members now. Great. So. Nice. Nice. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, correspondence. All right. List of questions if you'd like for me to go through that, Mr. Chair. All right. I could do that as I did the last meeting and just read the question and the response. Sure. There's also some questions that are specific for the board. I can respond to those too if you like. Okay. Okay. Um, these questions were submitted by Mrs. Colbath, and I wanted to make sure that we were able to answer them uh, this evening. <clears throat> the first question was about putting the minutes in the um, in the minutes that were recorded for last. Her questions in the minutes that were recorded for last week, and the board has already done that. Next question is how is Mahesh Sharma being paid? Um, he's a consultant that works uh, specifically around math instruction. He's being paid out of Title Two A funds. Question number three is, is West Ed the expert on Common Core that teachers are meeting with? The answer to that is no. Uh, number four, who signed the West Ed contract? I signed that contract. It was written in the application for this year under our federal entitlements. Number five, did the board know about the West Ed grant and why aren't grants accepted by the board? Uh, the West Ed is not a grant and it is part of our Title IIA grant application and any grants that are coming um, to the board new, um, I will be bringing those forward to make sure that the board can review the grants and what we're applying for, uh, even including our annual federal entitlement. So I'll be bringing that information to the board prior to um, us applying for those grants for fiscal year 15. Uh, next question is why aren't the food service and Kingswood survey results an agenda item? Uh, we do not have the results from the food service survey. However, we'll make the board, uh, we'll give the board those results once we do have them. And the Kingswood survey will be under my information this evening, those results. And I gave a copy to um, board members, those results, and I'll speak to them under my, under SA 64 on the agenda. Um, Number seven, what is wrong with the New Hampshire state standards? Where specifically are they different from the Common Core standards? There's nothing wrong, answer the first part, there's nothing wrong with our current state standards. And the second part of the question, what makes them different, what makes, what are specifically different from Common Core? Um, Common Core standards, they're offered fewer standards, however, they are more rigorous and go into greater depth from grade to grade. Uh, number eight, this was a question for the board. How can four board members attend a Crow meeting or something the board has been discussing is discussed without the meeting being posted? Uh, 
the answer to that is there, there, the board was there not conducting board business or to make decisions or to, to cast votes. They were there to listen. So they're not there to conduct board business. So it was fine for them to be there at that, that event, which I attended as well and was, was uh, glad to be there to hear the information. Number nine, it's a question for the board. How can three board members be on the facilities committee, which constitutes a quorum and discuss school board issues and take votes? Wouldn't that be an illegal meeting when you're excluding the other members of the board? Uh, it's, it's perfectly fine for uh, three members to be on a, on a subcommittee because our subcommittees <coughs> do not make final, uh, they, they do take votes to move items to the full board for a final vote, so there aren't any uh, board members that are excluded from a final vote uh, based on, the, on any subcommittee topic in general. Steve. Well, um, I realized that myself after I got on that committee, um, that um, there was three of us on there, so actually, uh, tonight I was going to actually take myself off if, that's, if, if I had to do that. I don't think you have to. You don't have to. Okay. I, I, I did realize that on my own, mm -hmm. um, and I had that as my notes for tonight. I, I, that does bring up a, a suggestion that we might want to think about. Uh, we could, um, if we wanted three members on a subcommittee, we could actually post it as a full board meeting and have, say for, for facilities, we could have a facilities work session as the first agenda item and as a full board. And the full board, regardless of whether it's three, four, or five people at that, at that subcommittee meeting, could speak, could ask questions, and cast votes uh, at that meeting, uh, and then we could adjourn that that subcommittee meeting as a full board and go right into our full board meeting. So we could actually include it as a full board if we didn't want to separate it out, because we tend to have uh, several board members that attend our our subcommittee meetings that have that sit in the crowd. So we still have to bring it to the full board, though. Well, right. Uh, not if it's a full board meeting. If you post it as a full board meeting, you could actually make your vote right then and there. I don't know if that's, I don't know if we should do that because if Norma or, or somebody else didn't show up for that and they wanted the input of their input, I, mean, I know Bonnie comes to a lot of them, mm -hmm. but Norma doesn't, uh, so, yeah, so I don't know if she late. wants to hear some of the information and then make her own decision on that. So, I mean, <clears throat> again, I could sit out in the audience and, and I have my comments anyways. And so sure. It's, it's up to you, you guys. You don't have to. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to. No. You just keep it the way it's she's she's talking, but she can't. Hello. Wait. No volume. Really? We lose Bonnie. Hold on a minute. Can you read? You get, that, you get that from Bonnie, all right? <laughs> read this. I see that hand thing. Oh. Hi. Not sure why you lost the sound unless you unplugged it down here. Oh, I thought that happened. See if she talks. Oh, about. can you hear us, Bonnie? Nope. No. It's got to be on hers. Bonnie, that might be on you. Can you hear me now? Is it, is it that thing over there, that extension thing? Check now. Bonnie, can you hear us? Oh, perfectly clear now. Thank you. Sorry for the delay. No problem. You had a comment, Bonnie? No, I just heard everything, but it was muffled, and I wanted to make sure I heard the responses correctly. Okay. Thank you. Um, there was two more questions. The next question was, when will the parent meeting be held to learn about the new math program? Uh, we're cu currently coordinating a meeting um, in May, and we're also going to coordinate a meeting for the beginning of next year in September uh, for parents to come in um, to get a basically a workshop on the math and focus program. And then number 11 is, um, this again, this is for the board. Will meetings be held at a later time so the parents can attend? That's all the questions. 
anybody want to address that? You want me to? I, I, I'm not convinced of that. Um, as you are well aware, I, I sat out there for many, many years. Uh, when the meeting started at 7, then they were moved up to six and 6.30 and 6, and I was the only person that sat there, so I'm not really convinced. This wasn't my question, Steve. This was came from, from a parent. In fact, most of these questions came from community members or parents. Only a couple of them are Thank you. Uh, new business. Report cards and cafe <laughs> services. We were looking at all when uh, we might be able to have a parent forum on that. On which? Both. Okay. And so explain to me the parent forum for report cards. What, what are you looking for specifically? Well, one of the, um, from what I'm hearing, all the parents like the traditional A to F. Okay. Versus, you know, the the scale, the, the rubric that is now being used. So I think that um, we'd like to have a discussion about whether or, whether we could go back to the traditional report cards. Well, at the time of um, this concept, Priscilla, do you remember whether or not it was um, pitched to the, the the board at the time that it was what Spalding High School was moving towards or was going That's to adopt? That's what we were told, that Spalding was moving towards that, and uh, we had to align with them. And uh, it was a pilot program, I think, kindergarten and seventh grade, if I remember correctly. And then I understand that Spalding, this is what I heard, I'm not positive, dropped that. So they're not using that, uh, what is it, the... Competency-based. Competency-based report cards. That I'm not sure of, but that's, that's what we were told to do the line of them. At least in the upper grades. I remember being in the audience when that discussion took place at the school board level, and, and um, I do remember hearing that that was what Spalding was headed towards. That's what we were calling it. I don't know, maybe Mr. Tersey knows if they if they dropped that or if they're still going forward with it. I'm not aware that they dropped it. I, I'm aware that they're continuing to move forward on their um, full implementation of competency-based education, K-12. to um, I have, I'll have a discussion with Mr. Gregoire about a possible parent forum and getting some community input on the report card process and to do that. And as for cafe services, what was the other piece? Yeah, ca cafe services also. Just to get feedback from the mm -hmm. community about mm -hmm. cafe services in general? It's, it's looking like maybe we might want to have a forum that has a couple items on there compared to individual yeah. forums mm -hmm. and just um, get some feedback from the community about some specific topics. would be happy to do that. Yeah. And the transparency piece, that was um, about po uh, the po uh, policies, what policies we're working on. Um, Possibly getting the policies on the SAU website, and also thinking about going back to a second reading of the policies. You have anything, Bonnie? Well, I guess my concern is that. I, I know that the policies are already on the website, but where we're changing things, I want to make sure that the parents are aware of what we're changing 
and what changes are being made. So, and then I don't want anyone and I don't want any particular group to be felt like we're trying to slide things in without contacting them. So I'm wondering if we can have some form of like, um, you know, on the policy meeting agenda, if we can have attached the policies that we're looking at and what portions we're looking to change, if any, or if we're just reinstating them. And then also, um, I think it might be in our best interest to, to go back to the, the discussion at the policy committee, bringing it to the first reading and allowing the people, you know, making sure that we're not missing anybody. And then going back to a second reading, just to confirm that people have a month to look at this and they can't get to it in one week or another, they're gonna have a month to look at it before it becomes approved. And, you know, make sure that the groups or the particular situations that might be involved have familiarity with what we're trying to do. I don't want anyone to think that we're trying to sneak things through the back door and not doing it appropriately because that's not our intention by any means. Oh, yeah. uh, well, can I get a motion to uh, go back to a second reading on the policies? I didn't know we actually moved away from it. I thought it was just we were doing an expedited version of it. Well, we went down on only one reading. So we didn't make a motion to go to one reading, though, did we? We did. Well, and we there's going to be a particular uh, policy involved, mm -hmm. and I don't have that policy number with me, but it's going to be how we approve policies, and it was changed a couple months ago. Okay. Right. So I'm hoping that we can have that on the agenda for the next meeting. Yep. If that's okay with all of you, so that we can, I don't know this, if they know this specific policy, that would be great, but I don't know it from here. Good one. I'll, I'll bring that um, policy to our next policy subcommittee because we'll just change the wording back to the way it was. That um, would be great. Yeah, that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. So I'll make a motion to change well, back. I guess we're going to know. We're going to wait. We're going to bring it back to the okay. policy committee and then we'll go from there. Uh, administration, curriculum coordinators report. <coughs> Any questions on that report? question I have is uh, how often do, do the team of teachers attend the quality performance assessment training? Is that uh, twice a year, three times a year? Or? Uh, it was twice during the school year and uh, two days during the summer. Or three times, I'm sorry, excuse me, three times during the school year and, and once during the summer. And is that one of the items that are covered under Title II grants? Title II. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Else? All right, thank you, Mary. Okay. Student Service Director's Report. Any mm -hmm. questions? I have a question. Go ahead, Bonnie. I still, I still haven't gotten the answer to how the children, the two typical children in the preschool are selected and is there a tuition there is not <clears throat> excuse me bonnie <clears throat> there is not a tuition um and i not sure i um heard that other question i'm not really clear how they were selected previously um i can tell you that we are looking at uh um revamping our preschool program so that it is more more of an integrated preschool where there will be more typical students in the program and then we would look at a tuition base okay All set. thank you Ann. principal's report mr. Gregoire 
Uh, you have my report. Uh, I introduced you, Anthony and um, Carrie, uh, earlier. So if there are any other questions, feel free. Good job on the residency forms. Yeah. Are you going to be, uh, will this the Wakefield Weekly be in the package <coughs> from now on? Yes, sir. Good? Yes, sir. <coughs> Good? Anybody got any questions, uh, Jerry? Nate, it looks like you're up. Do you have any questions? This is one report. So the graph looks a little better in color. But <coughs> I usually do. What I can try to do is make sure to have a color one for you to look at next time. Send you the, the, the one that you have and then have a color one back as a backup here. It might help a little. We, is it all this warmer weather that's making the small increase or increase? This one actually um, is e it's, it's even down from last year with 18, a total of 18 this, this last month. Um, and uh, re repeat offenders were only two students, so that's, that's not too bad. It's, it says, you know, counted for 22%, yeah. but with two, two uh, people, if they had a couple hard days on the bus, yeah. which is generally what it's winding up being right now, yeah. it, that spikes that percentage. Because it's the numbers are small, that percentage looks Goes great. up quickly, right. that's correct. I see. Is, are those, it's, but it also goes on to say that that 22% is up, oh, oh, I'm sorry, up from 10? Percent. Okay. From last month. Last month, repeat offenders only counted for 10% because there was one repeat offender. This right. time there was two, was so it took a little bit. <coughs> I was reading that wrong. Mm -hmm. If you look at our overall repeat offenders, though, for year to date, that's down. And it will continue to, it looks as though it's going to continue to trend down. So, you know, last month our overall was 21%. This, this or the month before that, um, this last month was 15%. So that's trending down overall as the um, year goes on. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Nate? Uh, SAU 64, school calendar. Mr. Chair, the last meeting, I believe it was the last meeting, I was meeting before that, I spoke about um, having to uh, bring the calendar back to the board. The original calendar had 185 work days for teachers. The salary schedule is based on 187, so we had to put two more teacher workshop days in there. And there was a discussion as to whether we would do two at the end of the school year, two at the beginning of the school year, or possibly splitting those. I went back, uh, meaning one at the beginning and one at the end. The board had suggested that they would like to see them at the beginning of the school year. Um, however, the association still wanted to see them at the end, one at the end and one at the beginning. I looked back and looked and saw at a, the am amendment to the regulations for the school calendar and the 60 hours that has to be put into a school calendar for inclement weather or emergency purposes also includes professional development for teachers. So we were able to, um, we're actually able to put the two more teacher workshops in within the school calendar and still uh, fit the requirements necessary to meet the rules for developing a calendar based on 180 school days for students. So um, what we were suggesting is actually having two, two, two teacher workshop days added at the beginning of the school year so we start off uh, the year with four full uh, professional development days for teachers and start the students on September 2nd. That would give parents that last week in August. It would give us four full professional development days for teachers um, and we wouldn't be splitting that week before the holiday weekend with just with two student days. So we're able to 
really, uh, is, in my opinion, this is an ideal way to provide professional development for teachers and, and also give families that last week in August to uh, have a vacation. So I'm looking for the board to um, approve the, the um, amended calendar with those additional two teacher workshop days at the end of August. And still no President's Day. No, sir. Still no President's Day. That's a shame. <clears throat> when you get to be President, well, then we'll have President's Day. Right. All right. Can uh, one fly? <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> I'll make a motion okay. to uh, adopt the amended calendar as presented by our superintendent. Uh, 2014 15? 2014 15. Thank you. Is there a second? I second that. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Even Aye. Aye. No president's day. <coughs> Uh, the next item I'd like to ask the board is in regard to the sale of the van. We haven't had any um, anyone putting a bid in for for the sale of the van. We'd like to know what the board would like to do at this point. Would you like to drop the price and re-advertise or what? What's the price at? Five thousand. No one looked at it at all. No, not even a call. Second. Drop it down to four. Five hundred. Anybody interested in four? Can I have a four? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe four or best offer? Yeah. That would be as. That's better than actually just saying open the bid or. Right. Huh. I like that, Bonnie. Do we need a motion for that? Mm. So four or best offer? The next would be the um, the demolition of the trailer and the shed on on the um, property. The since we found out that the gentleman that was interested in buying it for a dollar is is not going to be able to pick that up or fulfill um, the requirements necessary to get it off the lot. So what would the board like to do? Because we rejected all the bids, so we would have to go out to bid again for it. Well. So he can't do it at all? Correct. At all? So we can't give him what time to get better? No, we could. We could, but not to the board. I mean, is he still interested in it? If he could give, we give us some time this to heal? This became a health issue for him, right? Is that what? Right. He, he contacted me and said right after um, our last meeting when he put in that proposal, he landed up in the hospital <coughs> and they thought he had a stroke. Yeah, I'm aware of that. So he was said he would not be able to pick it up. Now, you know, a month from now or something, if, you know, if he's failing better, you know, I did tell him to, you know, to contact me if he was failing better and he was still interested, if the trail was still there. And I asked him, I also asked him if he knew of any other um, trailer parks or things of that nature that would be interested and he told me that he did he, uh, did know of three or four other people that might be interested but I've heard nothing back from him since then so um, I was wondering I, if we should just reach out to him one more time and get his feelings on that before we move forward I mean, well, it is only a dollar well but it's better than paying 63 absolutely but the thing, uh, what I'm thinking of now is, you know, we, we got a bid out on the trees, but we're not going to be doing that till a after school gets out. So at this point, is there real? There's really not a rush that the trailer needs to be off there today or tomorrow. So as long as we, you know, keep an eye on it, and we want to give give them a little more time, and then we can take care of it. Shall, shall we reach out to this gentleman and ask him if he's still interested in if we give him a, a, a set date of when it really needs to be off there? We can. I mean, it, like I said, at this point, I don't think there's really a rush to get it off there because we're not going to be doing the trees till after the school year is over. So, you know, we've got another what, month of... Uh, 
we'll do it because we don't have a, I was going to say, don't we have another meeting before April vacation, but I guess not. No. You think what? you could contact him before the next meeting and bring back what he says to yeah. Do you want to? I will if that's what the board wants me to do. Can I tell you to do that? You can ask me. <laughs> I'm not going to ask him that. Alright. <laughs> so. That's my suggestion. That's what, that's what I would do. I, you know, as, like I said, I don't think there's really, you know, a need to have that. It's got to be gone right this moment. I agree. If we're not going to be doing anything with the trees if, we if we talk we're talking dollars July. dollars that we were putting out then I would say that we need to look other places but this is pretty much free well so I think it would be worth another <coughs> shot I would think yep I agree is it still 60 the lowest uh, yeah I don't want to I didn't want to put that I wouldn't put the figure out there no a couple more items, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Torres. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Sear <coughs> asked uh, a couple meetings ago about uh, the safe routes to schools, and <coughs> those grants are still available. Uh, it's based on funding, however, so um, I'm not sure the history behind where Wakefield approached sa the safe routes to schools. Were, were you looking um, in the past to actually apply for some of that funding? to do some work in Wakefield and are you interested in actually applying for that again because it's a it's a reoccurring application a district can apply at any time for the funds as long as the funds are available well Teresa the town administrator really kind of headed that up okay and they did go through the process it's my understanding that um, they got some money for signage but the town did not want to go after um, the sidewalks because okay. the town doesn't want want to be uh, liable to maintain them afterwards. So the town said no to the sidewalks, and like I said, they did take they got some money for some signage, and that's I believe it's my <coughs> understanding from what I've got from Teresa that yes, it's still open, but there's really not I. You know, there's really not a lot left that people are looking for out of it. So, okay. So, should we keep that, keep represent, keep representation on a committee level, or wait to hear if the town wants to pursue it any further? Because this is where the question came out of: Should we still have representatives on a? Or maybe uh, if committee? you contacted Teresa and see what her thought or input was behind sure. that and I will. whether she wants to move forward with it or put it to bed or I can do that mm -hmm. uh, the next item that I have is uh, I gave all the board a copy of the results from our recent survey and I'll just go through those those results. <clears throat> if you skip all the way down to the bottom, we actually had a 36% return rate, which is a good percentage for surveys. You usually hope to get about 20% back, so we did get a, um, a good response back from the surveys. The way I broke this out is the top is we sent, we sent surveys to all of our high school students, uh, regardless of what school they were attending, and um, we did send out the survey with the self-addressed stamped envelope, uh, return self-addressed stamped envelope. So we sent out 162 surveys. Out of that 162 surveys, 19 responded that they would like for us to pursue an area agreement with Governor Wentworth. Zero responded, do not pursue an area agreement with Governor Wentworth. And 24 responded, continue negotiating the area agreement with the Rochester School District. And then we had three that checked both boxes pursue Governor Wentworth as well as continue with negotiating with Rochester School District and the comment on those surveys were specifically they wanted choice so to do both and three responded that way so overall we had more, resp um, more response 
in regard to continuing negotiating the area agreement with Rochester School District. That's 24 compared to the 19 uh, to have conversations with Governor Wentworth. That's at the high school level. What I wanted to do is separate out what are our high school parents, our current high school parents responding, and then what are our current Paul school parents responding. You'll see there we sent out approximately 420. I put approximately because some surveys might not have made it home depending on if they got jammed in a backpack and never made it out. But we sent out um, surveys to, and I said approximately 420. Out of those 420, 122 responded pursue an area agreement with Governor Wentworth. Six responded do not pursue an area agreement with Governor Wentworth. And 35 responded continue negotiating an area agreement with the Rochester School District. So you'll see that uh, the vast majority responded in the favor of pursuing an area agreement with Governor Wentworth. What so, was that number again? Which one, Bonnie? Uh, for the parents now that want to go to Kingswood? 122 responded. From Paul School. From Paul School. I'll give you the total um, here. Our total that was sent out was approximately 582. So that includes Paul School parents as well as current high school parents. 141 parents responded pursue an area agreement with Governor Wentworth. Six responded do not pursue an area agreement with Governor Wentworth. And 59 responded continue negotiating the area agreement with Rochester School District. So again, vast majority um, of parents did respond to go with Governor Wentworth as a total survey and then we did have those three that said they'd like to see the choice. So those are your total numbers uh, Mr. Chair regarding that survey and I was very pleased to see the return rate of 36 percent that means people are interested and want to be involved in that decision. Well and if I could just add um, something uh, Myself, Ralph, and um, Mr. Tersey attended the uh, Rochester School <coughs> District meeting, which was last week? Yes, last Thursday. Last the 10th? Mm -hmm. the, the 10th, and the Rochester School Board voted to leave it at the 10%. They didn't really address the issue. No, they kept it the, the same that they already voted on, which was to leave it at the 10, but we can combine the entire 8 to 12 population. The 9 to 12, they already made the that motion and voted in favor of. But that's, n that's not until next year, right? That doesn't, we can't do that for the kids going in now. It has to be the following year. That's correct because it would have to go onto a warrant uh, and have to be voted on since it's an amendment to the area agreement. So that would go on next, um, next spring's uh, ballot for voters to approve to amend that area agreement so it would be for the 15-16 school year. Should, should there be any kind of an effort to um, here in town find out what the overall town's feeling on even signing an area agreement with Rochester? Um, there may be more than just parents interest in this issue in the town I don't know if we needed you know to send out a town-wide question you know the to all the ta taxpayers and voters in town or should we just be concerned with the parents of students in town right because also as with Governor Wentworth if you use the Middleton numbers that Middleton just signed the contract we're, we're looking at a savings of 400000 So it is quite a considerable um, savings that we would receive as a, as a school district of sending the kids to Governor Wentworth versus following. So. And it would probably, the savings would probably increase because of the, the numbers is, is a right. If we were sending 100%, to Governor Wentworth, we'd get a better tuition rate. Just right, because Mid Mid Middleton's based on what, 80, 80 kids? 80. And we have like 200, so we might even be able to get that above 
I see a four, about <laughs> 400,000 bonding. I'm wondering if it might be beneficial to us when we have the parent forum to discuss cafe services, the report cards and transparency, maybe we make it a, a parent and town forum and then we can have a show of hands of the people and that might be a, a good way to hear the voice of the people. Because it sounds to me like the children that are already at Spalding would very much like to finish where they are. Mm -hmm. But the right. new ones that haven't gone forward yet would really like to be part of the Kingswood Regional School D District. So it takes two years to withdraw from an area agreement. So that would give the kids that are freshmen now, you know, maybe we could negotiate that they could finish and then we can move forward with Kingswood. I just think that maybe if we did it at the parent forum and had cards and we could really show you know, maybe we would get more of a response than just the one, one, uh, the one twenty-two. Well, it's actually one forty-one total. I'm sorry. One twenty-two is from Paul School, and nineteen from High School. Okay. So you're you're asking for an open forum everyone in Wakefield to come in and have discussion on these issues is that what you're mm -hmm. I think that would be best because how do we serve the people if we really don't ask them what they want they can call us all the time but if we invite them in and tell them that, that we want their input they're going to be able to direct us in the direction that they want us to move forward in Can you add that to the parent forum, Mr. I'd, Durson? I'd be happy to, and I'd also be happy to um, facilitate that parent forum so if the board members were there to attend, you could be there as active listeners um, and just hear what the community has to say. So I'd be more than happy to facilitate that, that forum with whatever topics you feel the community might want to discuss. But would it be better to post it and then we could maybe give input to, <coughs> to that sure. parent phone. That's fine. Don't you? Or do you want Mr. Teresi to just handle it? I think we should be available to answer questions. I do too. I do too. Gary should be available. I think Michael should be available. Andrew should be available. Mary and, 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 and everyone. All of the people that deal with the children's education should be available for parents to ask questions. And if we can't answer, answer a question, we can politely tell them that we will get back to them within, you know, 72 hours with the best answer we can give them. Is there a time frame that you would like to organize this forum? What's the date for that? If you could wait till after the first, that would be great. Well, right, but before, do you want to do this before the end of this school year? Yes. I mean, I would. Oh, I, we should that do. would be imperative. Yeah. So we can discuss a date at our um, at our first May meeting and start advertising or posting. Yeah. Both. So somewhere in May, basically. I, I mean, you could possibly even go into June, but I don't really see the need to. You have any ideas, Bonnie? One to, um, or any preference? One to I don't really. As long as you can do it after the first, I can be available whenever. So you want to put it on the next agenda? Bonnie? Why don't we have Michael look at the availability of all the people and have him figure out like two or three days and bring it back to us? Sure. I'll work for you, Michael. Yep. You know, and we can make it 7 o'clock to make sure that all the parents that don't come can be there. Or maybe we do it on a Friday night so that they won't have anything else to do. Nope. The nope. next no, no Friday meetings. 
Okay, I agree with that kind of. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Old old business. Revisit common call. Oh, I have a comment. Um, I know that we've been mulling this around for months of back and forth <coughs> discussion, and personally myself, um, I believe it's lack of information. I try to do a lot of digging myself over these months of, of getting the right answers for what's best for the Paul School. And listening to a lot of people talk, Mr. Tercy talk and, and Mary talking about how they feel about this and hearing that um, um, the Crow meeting that I attended and everybody else attended um, and the feelings and then I went a little bit further than that and tried to find what I could see that would be a positive to this, to this common core and I couldn't find anything. So my personal feeling is to my, to revisit this is to for me to reject Common Core in the Paul School, um, and that's that's how I personally feel. It's best for the Paul School. You want to make that a motion? If I have to make that a motion, I will. Yep. So is that a motion? I'll make that a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion and second. How about discussion? Um. Uh, we've kind of beat this thing, this, you know, to death. Um, I don't know how much more discussion we were, you know, how, how, you know. Well, I mean, every problem has a solution, and are we able to offer a solution? For, yeah, like I've said, I've stated before, and from the information that I can receive, we would um, then direct administration to go with the old Massachusetts standards that made Massachusetts number one in the country. So that would be my recommendation on what to use instead of common core. And we can also request and have Sandra Stosky come up and help us with the new standards. Well, she is the one that's free of charge, I believe. Yes. And she's had a great input. She helped write the old Massachusetts standards that made Massachusetts number one in the country. You, you are aware that Massachusetts currently um, is basing their standards around the Common Core standards? The new ones. Right. The new ones. And are they still at the top of the academic achievement part in the country? Where I'm sure they won't be after they adopt the Common Core standards. What gives you that positive feeling? Um, Positively negative feeling? <laughs> just the, like Bob said, we're not getting any r information we're not getting any, any information from the Department of Ed. We're not getting any information from anybody else except the research that, I'd, that I've done for I don't know how long it's been. And like Bob said, all the months that I've done, I cannot find one, an example of one benefit. There's way more negative than there is positive. I can't find anything yeah, positive, can't find any positive either. So, a big comment, Mr. Chair. If I may, just about the standards in general. It's not about Common Core. Good. Um, just Massachusetts still does continue to be the number one when it comes to student achievement. They have been for the past five years. Um, the other five states that uh, are, have, over the past five years, that have been in the top five has been Massachusetts, Maryland. New Jersey, Vermont, and New Hampshire. Um, all, of, all of those states did adopt Common Core in 2010, including Massachusetts, and Massachusetts <coughs> did continue to be at number one after that adoption, as well as all the other states. The only rankings that changed were in 2010 when 
Pennsylvania was bumped out from, as from number five by New Hampshire. So I just wanted to make sure you were asking for some information about some of the top states and the standards that you're using. I just want I did look that up and wanted to provide that information to the board. Right. Can I put some? So, can I, ask a veteran educator that I notice is in the stands here tonight. I, I, I have faith in her judgment. Um, <coughs> is that out of protocol? Make it short and sweet. Ms. Bivag, um, I trust that, that you may be familiar with Common Core, c the standards? I am I'm familiar with the Common Core math standards 5 through 8, which is a very small thing, but I have worked with standards for basically 30 years of teaching high school math. My experience has been, first and foremost, the experts are the people you're paying salaries. And I have talked with classroom teachers about different standards that they've been using, not only in this district, but in Kingsley, and the new Common Core. And they tell me that if you sit down with whatever textbook they're using now, and you look at their standards, and you look at Common Core, and you compare the two, um, you get a different, you get a factual comparison whereas there's an awful lot of emotional response and you hear about different states being first well what is that based on how did they get to be first is it sat results from the high school is it progress tests given in the school what makes them first and um, a lot of these statements don't come with the facts that back them up now, the classroom teachers that I have spoken to that have taken the time and, you know, to ask a, a teacher to take the time to do that, it's very involved. And most districts don't want to pay their classroom teachers to do that. Personally, having been a classroom teacher and now, uh, you know, a consultant to some of this, these standards, I think any board that doesn't do that is being remiss because the classroom teacher knows the students that they're teaching they know their capabilities I have looked at some of the common core requirements for seventh and eighth grade and I'm like wow that's what I was teaching in ninth grade algebra one this stuff that they're saying in eighth grade or seventh grade are eighth grade honor student material now that's wonderful. I think raising the standards is fantastic. But I'm not sure the children are mathematically mature enough in seventh and eighth grade for the whole class to be able to do that. Now other standards I have heard um, in the Common Core and you compare it to what's being taught now in the different grade level, the Common Core seems to be a little lower. But you know, it's if I had had the time to sit down with, say, sixth grade math and compare them, I think it would probably, you know, have been beneficial to what I'm saying. But I think if you are really going to make a decision and it's going to be impact the next <coughs> 10 years, that's usually what standards go, um, that you probably should talk to your classroom teachers and, and you know, take one of your um, teacher workshop days and sit them down <coughs> with the standards they're using, the Common Core standards, and, and have them compare them. Have them actually give you back some facts. You know, what they're asking for at fractions at the seventh grade level is exactly what we're teaching with our own standards now, or it's above, or it's below. And those are the people, even if I look at the textbook, I can't tell you that, oh, well, this is above or below what's being taught at Paul School because I don't teach at Paul School. And I think it's fantastic that this board is concerned enough about the students in, in Paul School, not in the rest of the world, but in Paul School, to be involved in wanting to pick the standards. But I think way back at the beginning, um, I did a post um, that said that, you know, you <coughs> have to have standards 
to set your curriculum to. Uh, doesn't matter so much what the standards are, it's how well the person in the classroom is using those standards and teaching by them. Because, you know, no one's in there every day. You've got some excellent, excellent teachers here in Paul School. And you're paying them a lot of money. Plus, in my opinion, not enough. But anyway, you're paying them a lot of money. I would ask their opinions. Because as a math person, I can tell you, yes, this, these two compare or they don't compare or the common core is a little higher than what seventh grade should do or not do. But there's English, and uh, science, and what's the other standard? There's another one, isn't it? It's language language arts. arts. Language arts and math. Okay, so yeah, um, those two. And language arts. History. You could tell me anything. You could tell me that language arts in third grade, they should know how to, you know, um, I don't know, write a seven-page autobiography, and I wouldn't be able to tell you yes or no, except that I wouldn't want to do a seven-page autobiography today, so, you know, I can't help you there. But I think your classroom teachers are your experts. They really are. And a lot of it, I know the Common Core 7th, 8th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th math standards are written so the normal person would have trouble understanding about half of it, you know. Um, some of them I had to stop and, and go, wait a minute, what are they talking about comparing uh, ratios and y equals mx plus b? You know, and go back and say, well, I understand now what they're talking about. But it takes, it takes a little bit of, of studying, whereas your classroom teachers would know, and they would know if they were teaching. I'm sorry, that probably wasn't as short as you would like. Well, thank you. There's a motion and second on the floor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bonnie? She said. Aye. Do I hear you? No, I, I, I thought that the, uh, I'll be against it only because I thought that having standards in place and building to them uh, was, was an approach that, that um, I, I have to say that as a sovereign, I don't like the idea of the federal government handing down our educational goals here in Wakefield. For that reason, I don't support the Common Core, but for, for the, if we're not asking the teachers, we're not, you know, there's a lot of things that that I'm uncomfortable with this particular motion, so I'm just voting against it. But uh, I've also heard that teachers are afraid to say anything about it because they're afraid of their jobs. So, you know, uh, I well, think without talking to the teachers, we can't say that for sure. Oh, well, that's the rule. Yeah. Right. Bonnie? <laughs> We've been asking the administration for four or five months now to give us as much factual and as much input they can provide us. And we don't really have a lot of opinions from teachers that they've given us. And, you know, and we've asked. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of asking. I want to see success. I want to see high success. I want to see. I want to see the bar. I want. I want better for the kids. Mm -hmm. All right. Michael. So my next question is, what would you like for us to use? The old Massachusetts. And if the board would like. Um, I've been told that I can contact some, and they can reach out to Sandra Stosky and ask her to come and help us with that if that's what the board would like me to do. I Go ahead, Michael. Chime in on this one. Um, and what would be the purpose of her coming to work with, with our staff if the standards are already written? I don't know, but it may not be a bad idea. We, we, we could tweak them or modify them or do any. She may ha have some suggestions. So are you recommending that we develop our own standards? That's because that's the professional development you're referring to. Well, I'm thinking that we probably need to go use the old Massachusetts as um, 
a starting point and possibly move from there. Okay, just because I want clarity on what I need to tell the staff as to what we're going to do at this point um, because the direction has changed. So I need to let the staff know what direction we're going in at this point um, and start leading that process. I believe that it would be in our best interest to go with the old Massachusetts standards. So the vote and call. Vote and go. One against. But so was there? There wasn't a motion or a vote on what standards to use, because that's an important part of this next direction. Because we're going to have to, as I said, completely shift what we're doing. Anybody want to make a motion? I, my my suggestion would be the old Massachusetts. That's the suggestion that. Other people have made also. <clears throat> I have no answer for that myself. I don't know if you had anything better, Mike, yourself. No, I just um, I'm not familiar with the old Massachusetts standards or the current Massachusetts standards. Um, I just think there's going to be professional development that's going to be necessary to teach teachers about new standards that are coming in, um, and that and I know people don't want to hear this, is going to take time because teachers are not familiar with Massachusetts standards whatsoever and it's going to cost to do that. So well, we're all, It's already been a cost, so mm -hmm. I, I'm really, you know... I, 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 um, I'd like to say that I think that the um, board is failing the, the staff here at the school by not having the teachers give us some input. We asked for that, Ralph. Well, I don't know if we asked for it. I didn't. I don't recall. I'll make a point. Well, I think we have to. You know, we have to urge Michael where he says he's not familiar with the old standards or the new standards of Massachusetts, and I think that's where Dr. Stotsky might be able to assist us in moving forward. And I think we want to use those as our basis for our standards, but we're not going to settle that that's the best either. We need to do what's we need to look at those standards when, you know, and those old standards are when we were successful in reading and when we were successful in math. It uh, was about seven years ago, before all of the Common Core started taking place in our building is when our children were most, the most successful. So I find it imperative that we ask the staff and we ask administration to dig as deep as they can into their archives and find out what math program were we using seven years ago when we were so successful. What English and science and social studies curriculum were we using that we were a blue ribbon school and that Paul school was so high that parents were eager to send their kids here. So I want to know what academic success we can find with the old Massachusetts standards, but perfect them to be super for the Paul School kids. Do you want to make that a motion, Bonnie? If she wants to use that as a motion, we can. I have to tell you personally, I don't know. Uh, I'll I don't know the ins and outs of all the standards but all the research that I've done personally the old Massachusetts are the highest mm -hmm. you want to make that a motion that we use that we direct administration to go with the old Massachusetts standards as a basis as a basis as a start and then as yeah. a start point and contact Sandra Stotsky to find out the ins and outs and see what's already available for us Mm -hmm. and then to take a good hard look at the, the books that we have and and the, the needs that we have and make it work. Are you, so is that a motion? It can be. I'll, I'll make a motion if you prefer. I'll, I'll make a motion that we direct administration to use the old 
Massachusetts um, standards. Um, and like I, that'll be my motion. And like I said, I can reach out and have Sandistoski to come down and look at them with us and see if there's anything that we might want to change. But my motion will be to direct administration to use the old Massachusetts standards. I'll second it. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Abstain. Okay. Thank you. Modular update. Uh, the the modular they have come in and serve pro has uh, basically cleaned up any of the issues that, that we had in the modular um, RPF the um, testing firm had come in to test for um, any type of mold after serve pros come in and we're waiting back for those testing results once we get those testing results uh, back we'll uh, start reconstructing the wall um, in the modular the roof leak has been fixed um, and temporarily I should say because it was more of a patch um, so we'll just keep the board posted on any of the uh, any of the updates the plan is to um, have the information back from RPF by this Friday so that we can um, do construction over the April vacation and have students back in there um, hopefully the week after vacation um, but is that patch going to be good enough? I, you know, I hate to see, you know, you have a patch on the roof, you go, you're doing all this to, to abate the issue, go back, rebuild the wall, and then it leaks again. So, shall we, you know, do we need to address the roof? You would think the, the roof should be addressed. That's what you like to do, we can do that. I just, you know. You don't want to go through all this process and then have another leak. Um, you know, if they feel the patch is going to last, so that's on the, <coughs> is that on to be done this summer? Yes, I mean, when I talked to Jared today regarding that, he feels that what they did will last be fine until they replace the roof and repair the roof in the summer. All right. I'm okay with them putting it back together. Gary Road tree bed. Um, as we discussed at the last meeting, the site walk will be on the 21st of April, and the bids are due in on May 6th. So we'll have those that um, the responses to the bids for our, our board meeting in May. Update on the timber harvest there was a gentleman that was going to come out to give us an estimate as to what the timber was worth um, he said he would like to wait until um, it's basically not so soft back there to get an idea as to what what he's looking at so he still wants to wait for some of that to dry out to walk that property so he's going to set the date I believe um, Mr. Williams has been in touch with him to, to talk about specifically when they'll get out there. Okay. I know he wanted to wait till the snow was gone. And um, is can it we, uh, notify the facilities committee is that what you're thinking? Mm -hmm. um, of that date and then I think that'd be helpful. You know, I think as many board members as can possibly go out there and see what the situation is firsthand is <coughs> better make an informed decision on it. Mm -hmm. I can do that. Yeah. I'd like to set up a grant workshop after the first of the month. You just let me know the date and be happy to do that. We had included in your packet what our um, current grants are that we're managing and the assurances that go with each grant when they, the start and end dates are of our current grants. <clears throat> we under the understanding that we'll um, receive our, um, our allocations for 
fiscal year 15 in the coming weeks and at that point we could sit with the board and have a conversation as to this is what um, we're being awarded for the federal entitlements and have a conversation as to how you feel we should be spending those monies. Are these I should all say how we feel we should be spending those monies. Are these all of them because from what I recall we had this 1.7 million in grants? These are all of them Mr. Chair. That we it's all of them managing. just comes out to the one because I look I didn't add them but I what I at what I did add up in my head, it looked like it was about seven hundred fifty thousand, which would leave, you know, no. about another seven hundred thousand left. So I'm not sure about that, but what we're currently managing is around a little over three hundred thousand dollars in federal entitlements and about eighty thousand dollars we received from for free and reduced monies from the federal government. So we're looking at about three hundred eighty thousand dollars in federal funding. Our IDA monies for students with disabilities are actually, it's an SAU fund. It's not specific to Wakefield. Bonnie, do you have, uh, do you want to wait till you get back and then we'll set a date? Or? Um, I'm fine if you want to set it now. As long as it's after the first, that would be great. And you, um, it, that would have to be four o'clock. Can you pull a card you can make? Yep, I can get it. Um, does anybody have a... 4.30 is better for me, Steve. 4.30 is better for mm -hmm. Norm. Okay. Does anybody... On, on the 6th, we have um, tentatively set up with cafe services to meet, so that probably wouldn't be a good day for Bob or I. 7th um, meeting, so... The 8th is Harry Truman's birthday. I don't want to be here for that. Right. How about how about the 13th then? I think it's that Steve. Tuesday. Works for me. Works for me. Perfect. May, May 13th at 2.30? At 4.30 rather than 30? At the Paul School or the SAU? Uh, I'd prefer here. Okay. Well, on this uh, Title I Part A program assurances, towards the very bottom of it, it states that the um, one of the assurances that the results from the state assessment will be provided to the parents or to parents and teachers as soon as it is practically, practically possible after the test is taken. It's an, it's in an understandable and uniform format and to the extent practicable provided in a language that the parents can understand. I can't understand much of the language that that says right there, but but um, I think it's saying after the test is taken, every parent will be notified of the results. Correct. And that was dated August 3rd, 2001. I'm, I'm trying to think as a parent how often I've seen these test results, <coughs> and I can't think of a a whole lot of incidents where I've seen something that has come back. The, um, in reference to the date that you referred to, August 3rd, 2011, that's the last signed assurance that we have for Title I Part A, so that's why I included it in the packet. But every year we send home NECAP results with, um, with students, so once we receive those results, we, we're given a, um, a um, result sheet that goes home with students to the parents, so that's what that's referring to. So any state test, we get the results and it goes home with the to, the, to the parents via the students. Via the students? Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe she's hiding it from me. I doubt that. <laughs> okay. School board business. All right. Anything, Michael? Yes, sir. Committee reports. Um, is it, well, nothing from the facility we reported on the facility last one. We didn't have a policy committee meeting today because Bonnie wasn't able to attend. I did already report on um, <coughs> that myself, Ralph, and Mr. Turris, he attended Rochester, and they did not want to budge off their 10% of allowing students to go elsewhere besides Paulding. 
Is that, are you okay there, Paul? Yep. How's that? Is that better? Perfect. She doesn't have to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have one. Um, like Bonnie said, cafe services, we had a meeting set up, but we postponed that to around the 6th of May, I believe, um, a tentative date for that. So that's what, what, what's coming up with that. Um, I have one other besides that. Um, hearing um, some of the comments uh, about uh, our subcommittees, um, I just want to throw around that some of the um, uh, community would like to get on some of our subcommittees. Now that's, that's possible, isn't it, Mr. Mm -hmm. Jesse? I believe so. Because, you know, even cafe services, you know, um, I heard Lino was interested in something like that and a few others uh, maybe involved in getting them to different subcommittees. And I know we have to pick chosen ones that we can actually have that happen. Can we get a list of what what those are and, and, and uh, maybe at the next meeting ask anybody if they want to jump on any of those committees? I think that's a, a great way to get the community involved in that, too. Uh, I, I agree. I would just like to check and to make sure that public can sit on board committees. I don't see why it would be a problem, but just let me make sure that we're doing what we should be doing. I think it's a great idea. And it should be posted as well if we're going to well, throw it out there. No, well, I think we well, need to know what committees right. first that right, we're allowed to do that, that, if we're allowed to do that. Yep. Oh. I'll look into that. And then if, if you use the word sit, that means they have a, I would think they would have a right to vote. Yeah. And I don't know well, if that's. I, I wasn't actually thinking of that. I was thinking of their, their input um, in, right. a, in a subcommittee and then. Attendance. Att well, right. uh, their input too. I mean, it's, you know, uh, and then us taking it back to the, the full board uh, for approval of, of, of anything, like we normally do. But, you know, a few extra uh, bodies, bodies for the uh, uh, community mm -hmm. would be a great thing, I think. Mm -hmm. I think a lot, of, a lot of the community would appreciate that too, on some of the things that's going on. All right, can you uh, look into that, yes, sir? And um, also, I would like to be notified when the uh, meeting with Cafe Service is going to be. Okay. And see if I can attend. All right. Uh, public comment. So. I have a couple of uh, policies here about community involvement and decision-making and curriculum development. Can I come hand that to you? Yep. That's your only question? Can I come hand it to you? <laughs> That's the only question? Can I come hand this to you? No, I just oh. don't. <laughs> what policy is it, Steve? KCB. 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 KC. Okay. K is in Ken, C is in Charlie, B is in boy. Thank you. And IGA. How many years do you have left on me? Thank you. Spalding agreement. There is no. And there's no end point to it. Oh, there isn't? It's an open-ended. Mm -hmm. Okay, at one time it's 25 years, but you know, that, no. that ended and we never... I think that it... Was it 2005 the last time it was uh, changed? Yep. It was changed in 2005, and not, now there's no end date to it. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, what's the address for the Facebook... Uh, Paul School Facebook page. I couldn't find it at all. Is it Paul School? Sure. I believe it's, uh, I, I don't know the address for it, but I believe if you, if you ended up um, searching for Wakefield. I and I, and I, can't, I can't get it out. We can't get access right here. But I hope I get that to you. Okay. As long as I can't get to it through our server here, it, we're, we're blocked. So I can get that for you and provide that to the board. That's what uh, Jerry was saying at the Facebook page, and I couldn't find it all. I got put in all kinds of things. I, I will provide that to the board and <coughs> go from there. Jerry will send it to me, and I'll send it out to the board. Make sure Priscilla gets a copy of it, too. Thank you. And the only other thing I noticed was 
Yes. You were talking about Title I and why parents weren't getting information. Ralph, you said you weren't sure if you got information. We're not a school-wide school, so only the parents of Title I kids would be getting information. Mm -hmm. well, I, I don't understand what that meant. You were not a school-wide school? Right, that uh, is two categories, school-wide school and probably Marriott. Speak to it, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Jersey. Um, what Ms. Colbeth is referring to is that information that goes out to students who receive Title I services receive information, parents will receive information specifically to Title I services. However, what's stated in the assurances there is that all parents will receive um, any type of state testing results. And that's what we do with all students. But we do, any student that qualifies for Title I, um, they get additional information about Title I services that we provide, particularly around reading and math instruction. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. I just want to thank you for giving <coughs> the common core standards and the curriculum for the kids as a parent, as a student here. It definitely puts me a little bit more at ease that you're going to be looking more into this and what's best for our kids. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I have um, a motion to go into non-public under RSA 91A32? B and C tuition requests and nominations. I'll second your motion. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Joy, aye. Brown, yes. Thank you for coming. Sure.